Hello and welcome to this episode of Citizen Meta One. Today is a very exciting today because it is the launch of the early release of the MetaHuman Creator, which allows you to create MetaHumans like me that you're watching here today. So we're gonna go through a quick first look at how the MetaHuman Creator app works. It is a web app, which is really cool. And I'm gonna show the basics of the workflow of creating a MetaHuman from scratch, so to speak, and how we get that into Unreal Engine and then taking a ride on the new MetaHuman here, so to speak, and checking out how it works with my performance system. So let's jump right into this and check out the MetaHuman Creator app. So what you'll see here, first of all, is that it is a web app. So you're gonna to need to be on a web browser. And this whole thing is basically pixel streaming technology. So you're logging on to a really high-end computer somewhere and you're just remote controlling it through your browser. So we're gonna start with a brand new MetaHuman here. And you'll see that you're gonna have a couple base character options. So I'm going to pick this character and we're going to hop onto the next screen where we're going to be able to go through some of the different customization options. So I'm going to just kind of fly through uh, the different options that are here. You'll see that we have different options for the face, which is probably the most interesting to start with. And I don't fully understand how this works, but you're able to pick from three different. Can I make three with this one? Here it is. Three different um, choices of faces and people. And then I think the system kind of like mushes them all together. Like if they were like all related, this is the child of somehow all three of these, something like that. And it allows you just kind of randomize uh, what kind of face you get. And what's really, I think, spectacular about this system is that it doesn't just let you go absolutely wild and do whatever you want with the customization. It's going to keep it in bounds, so to speak, um, in that I believe it was trained from scans of real humans and then has a machine learning algorithm and database that isn't going to allow you to do something that's wildly um, weird or non human, non meta human. So uh, if we skip ahead to where I'm customizing this face now, you'll see that we have various controls like on the nose and the mouth and the lips and the eyes. And you can kind of just intuitively grab them and just drag them around and it'll change the shape of the human's proportions. While it is possible to get very big, big eyes, probably not so common. Um, I think what's happening here is that it's keeping it in bounds, so to speak, of what it thinks a real human, more or less, would look like or could look like. So even if you go really towards the edge of the system, the edges, the extremes of the system, you're still gonna get a human uh, or metahuman that looks somewhat believable. And compared to if you've ever used uh, another like kind of like freestyle character creator, if you go to the edge of the slider, you are gonna get some very um, very weird looking results where I think they have some pretty good guardrails for customizing the face here. So that's really nice for someone like me who is not a 3D artist trained in like, you know, what are the proportions of the face. Um, uh, I was able to come up with this human here, just randomly dragging sliders around and it looks like a perfectly plausible human for me. And it's probably the avatar, probably the avatar I'm gonna be using uh, for the next couple episodes here. So moving on to some of the other customizations, you can go really to town with the sculpting, uh, as you'll see here, and the shifting around of facial proportions. And you basically start the whole thing, like I said, with mixing a couple uh, pre-existing, uh, like preset metahumans. From there, you can continue to customize. Uh, one of the most important things is the hair. The hair is absolutely incredible, and this is a groom you're looking at, so the highest quality possible. It does take an extremely powerful computer, you know, relatively, um, to get the hair to render like this in a full groom with ray trace lighting to have it look this nice that you're looking at right now. And there are lots of different options. I'm going to be going through each one of the metahumans and one making sure it works with my performance system, checking out the lighting that I've designed so far and uh, looking forward to checking out all these different haircuts. There's so many and they are so extremely realistic 
it's incredible. Moving on to some of the customizations, you can change your body type. You can see some of those different morphs that are happening here. And of course, you're going to be able to change your clothing. Now, at the current recording of this video, this is day one of the MetaHuman Creator launch. We only have a couple of options for tops and pants and shoes, and I'm cycling through some of those now. However, despite there being kind of few uh, options for the MetaHuman uh, approved clothing, these clothing assets are not normal uh, compared to what's out there in the 3D world, the 3D metaverse of getting uh, human clothing, the shaders on these things are absolutely incredible. Uh, so go check them out up close at high quality. The hoodie has hoodie fuzz, so it looks really furry. This shirt's a little bit shiny, um, kind of incredible. So look at the work that they've done to these. The question is, what do you do to get this back into Unreal Engine. Do you have to export it? How does that work? Well, the glorious part about all of this, the seamlessness of this is that as you are creating this MetaHuman, as soon as you back out to the home screen or possibly even earlier, they just magically show up in Bridge. You obviously have to be logged into the same Epic Games account on your Bridge account as you are for the MetaHuman Creator app and just poof, magically, they just appear in your Bridge. And then what you have to do is initiate, I think the first download, and then it's gonna take about 40 minutes-ish to an hour, probably depending on traffic and other things I don't know. It's gonna take about, I, I would say just give it an hour roughly. It's gonna take about an hour for it to generate. And I'm, ha I'm assuming this is like a cloud process where it's putting it all together and packaging it. And basically, yeah, basically running like a packaging algorithm. And then you're gonna be able to download it like you can download any other bridge asset and it just one click exports into Unreal Engine. I would recommend at this point being on the latest build of Unreal Engine, so that's 4.26.2. I just updated today from .1 and everything just comes in perfectly. Um, the shaders look great. Uh, you'll see that the animation logic that I'm working with right now is working pretty much flawlessly all works with AR kit and whatnot. I mean, you're not gonna have this live solver, but what, however you're doing your animation uh, live or keyframed, uh, they're working just as well as the sample. And I had to do very little to get this actually up and running. So now that we've gone over the general process of creating the MetaHuman from the web app and getting it into Unreal Engine, that stuff's like really easy. You can't do it wrong. Let's check out what can go wrong and that is doing animation and controlling and lighting. So let's talk about the face here. This is the stock Unreal Engine AR kit to MetaHuman control rig. I have done no modifications to it. I haven't profiled it for my face. I haven't calibrated it for anything. This is pure stock, what almost everyone will get performance wise out of using Live Link face in an iPhone and um, putting it on a MetaHuman. Now there's a lot of ways and it's a very pretty pretty large topic about calibration and customizing the, um, the facial performance. But just so that you know, this is what it looks like out of the gate, out of the box. And really for me, because I have so much other things to deal with, I'm gonna call this good for me. And again, if you're using take recorder and recording this facial data, you can go and of course clean it up in Unreal Engine if you want to or in whatever animation program you're using, which I'm gonna go ahead and say is basically Maya or Motion Builder. You really don't clean up motion capture data in any other program, um, at least as far as what I see out there in the industry. Uh, as far as the hands, I actually need to do a deep dive in these. They actually look better. In my opinion, this um, procedural fist pose, because I'm using index controllers, actually looks better than uh, the other MetaHuman I was using. So these hands, I think, work a little bit better uh, as far as posing and I need to display them. And yeah, there's subtle differences in the hands. Um, and I like how these ones look a lot. I'm gonna download a lot of MetaHumans and do a lot of testing with this, but the hands, very nice and are uh, working quite well uh, with my procedural hand system. And I'm sure they work great with any hand mocap system if they did the profiling correctly. Uh, let's look at the hair. 
absolutely incredible. Like rendering so well, it looks like real hair. Uh, this hair is very um, tight, so we're not probably gonna be able to test any physics on it, but we'll check out some of the longer haircuts uh, in future episodes. That's probably what I'm gonna do for the next like week or so here is just test out a lot of different metahumans in this system, see how they look uh, for control and whatnot. Now, before we look at what's broken, which we've already kind of looked at, let's look at my new hand physics system. Uh, I'm able to uh, basically touch my body more or less and have the hands not collide. Uh, there is a little bit of uh, wrist breakage you can see here. Every once in a while, the wrist will kind of pop out of the shirt. Um, that's something I'll have to look at what's going on there. It's probably 100% the live control rig. There's something wrong and I'll check that out. Uh, I'm able to put my hands on the table like this, right? So let's, uh, boom. These are physics hands based. Uh, I used to do this based on line traces and whatnot. Yeah, you can see the wrist popping out. But this interaction is actually now physics based. And uh, if I took control of the hand pose itself later, uh, it would look even more convincing. But yeah, can put my hands down. Uh, we can actually even um, have our physics hands touch each other like this. Right, so they're doing a little bit of physics there, but really what it's mostly important for is being able to go like this and have the hands not just outright clip through the body. The fingers can still clip through. I'm not tracking those individually yet. That might be one of the next steps we do here, but that sort of thing helps just uh, keep, keep believability. Uh, same thing with the head. Let's see here. Yeah, that's looking pretty good for the collisions. Now, the part that I screwed up, and this is not metahumans. Uh, if you watch my previous videos, this isn't an issue at all. But right now, as it is my shoulders, uh, the post process that's designed to uh, preserve mass essentially around shoulders and, and the butt, which I'm not testing lower body on this system yet, uh, I have something set up wrong. So my shoulders are not working correctly. Um, the rig is working, but I think somewhere I turned off a post process blueprint or when I was changing the skeleton of the new metahuman, I didn't get, it didn't work right. And something with the shoulder post process blueprint basically just isn't firing. So whenever I figure out where that is, it's just swapping an asset or changing a skeleton or retargeting something. The shoulders will work just like all the other demos that you can watch on this channel. But overall, this workflow is incredible. There's so much nuance to figure out how to do this uh, well and do it better and better but you go on to a website, you do what is basically a, a video game character customization, and then without even doing anything, it just shows up in your bridge and you one click export it to Unreal Engine and you are off to the races with however you work with metahumans. If you're a video game designer, if you are in virtual production and gonna be using them to make short films or whatever, uh, for me, I'm going to be making YouTube videos and then also putting them into Cinetrace or the video game that I create. And man, I am excited about this. And this is just like one click import a metahuman, do a little bit of messing around in blueprints for my system, and I'm up and running. I can perform whoever I want. I can record it with Take Recorder or just go live right like you're seeing right now. This is 100% just live. Uh, testing the metahuman, no recording, no rendering, just render it all out. Well, that wraps it up for this video. I uh, hope you enjoyed this quick overview of the metahuman creator process and uh, very first look at, again, the live puppeting system. This is not full quality yet. Again, the shoulders are kind of messed up and the physics is uh, early days, whatnot. But uh, I'm still very impressed with it, very happy and look forward to seeing what the community does with metahumans. I'll check you on the next video.